Today, I thought I'd put a tracer effect on my assault rifle so you can see the bullets coming out. That's pretty cool. Somebody mentioned it, and I thought it was a really good idea. Let's go ahead and try it out on these zombies over here. Get close so I don't miss them. And then I want to see a good angle. I want to get a good angle on it so we can see that tracer. Yeah. Let's get another one. Let's get this guy. Brah. All right, let's go ahead and get started with that. So in order to follow along exactly, I put a link in the description for the model, and I did this a few videos back, or maybe a few months ago. So it was called M16 Shoots 2. I made it shareable. I did it under one of my alts, and I'm getting it under Simtech Gamer 7 to make sure that it's still available. I already got the model, so it just says try in studio. So go ahead and press this button, it'll be like get model, and then you can open up your Roblox Studio, and then go to your toolbox, go under your inventory, and you'll see M16 shoots step two. Go ahead and pull that into your workspace. There are two scripts. One is the client side script for the activate, and the other one is a server script that I call damage. We're gonna be working on that to make our tracer. Let's go over to our M16 in the workspace, open it up, and I'm gonna look for the gun part, right? So the gun part's the solid part. I have a handle attached to the gun part. This is the mesh though. And I'm gonna put an attachment on there. So let's go ahead and hit the plus sign, AT, attachment, and we'll go to move, select the attachment. I wanna move it to my barrel, All right? There we go. All right, now it should be centered that way. Nice. Now I'm gonna call this ATT0. I'm gonna do a control D to duplicate that attachment. And I'm gonna make this ATT1. Now I'm not shooting projectiles out, out of this uh, assault rifle. I'm doing everything with code. So I'm gonna add a beam for my tracer. Let's go to my Gun part, hit the plus again, hit a B, we got a beam. Let's grab the beam, and we're gonna go down to where it says attachment zero. Oh yeah, that one right there, ATT zero. Attachment one, ATT one, and we'll get our ATT one, hit the move. Let's pull this out so we can work on our beam. All right, so that beam kind of looks funny. Let's go ahead, click the beam, and we need to have the face camera checked. Cool, too thick, right? Let's go to our width zero. I don't know, we can make it like a 0.2, maybe even smaller than that, maybe 0.1, and then maybe make the other end 0.2, like that. You might want something like that. Now we need to put a texture in here. Uh, I'm not gonna get any special textures. Let's just go ahead, go to the workspace, hit the plus, hit a P for particle, and I'm gonna grab a particle. I'm gonna grab one of these particles. So where's my particles? Oh, of course, down at the bottom, particle emitter. We're gonna go to texture on the particle emitter. Let's just go do a TE. There we go, texture. And then I will copy that, copy, go to my beam, and now we're gonna get our texture there, and we'll paste it. Hit the enter. There we go, so we got some sort of uh, beam effect going that's looking a little bit better. Let's delete this over here, these particles, they're annoying. There we go. All right, what else do we have to do for this? I think I'll turn up the texture speed that one what does 10 look like that that's pretty good actually so the light color is good you might want a little bit of a yellow maybe some sort of blended color effect let's get rid of that te there and we can change our color maybe like a yellow right you might you might want a blended effect so just go over to these three dots and then you can start it off at like white so click that little square there, and we'll get like a white. 
and then it'll go more yellow, or you could just make the whole thing white, right? I think that's good for the video though. So we have a few different options for the texture mode. We have stretch, which is the default. You could do static, right? That's kind of cool too. And then wrap doesn't get you that much. I think I'll go stretch though, right? That's what I did in the video. And what else we got? Oh, I accidentally changed it. Stretch, enter. I think that's good for now. Let's go ahead and do some code so that we can make the, the beam fire and we're gonna turn it on and off with code too. We don't wanna just run in like that. So I'm gonna go over to my damage script, right? We'll open that up in a second. I want to move the ATT1 back into the muzzle though, so that we don't have that hanging around like that when you pick up the gun. Let's grab that ATT0, that's on the muzzle. We'll get our position, control C, go to ATT1, control V, there we go. All right, so that's, that's good, that's how you're gonna pick it up. You're not gonna see any beam when you're not shooting anything. So now let's go to that damage script. Boom, cool. So on my damage script, I'm gonna need some variables up top. I'm gonna to get a variable for the gun part. So I'll say local gun part equals script dot parent. And let's see, there's a script. There's a parent. Let's go down one level to the gun part. Gun part, cool. And then we need our attachment zero ATT0, that is on the gun part, ATT0. Let's get another variable for ATT1, gun part, ATT1. What else? We need our beam, right? That's also in the gun part. Beam, cool. Let's get the debris service too. Let's go local. Uh, debris, and that'll be a game, get service, debris. All right, now I need a helper function to make my tracer. Local function make tracer, I'm gonna pass in the position. All right, so let's go ahead and clone ATT1 and the beam. That way we can make a smoother transition between the different shots when we go to like auto mode, rather than just using the original over and over again. I think this is a little better. Let's do a local ATT1 clone. I'm gonna get my ATT1 and I'm gonna clone it. I'm also gonna get my beam clone. Beam clone by cloning our beam. Cool. Now, when you clone something, it's a deep clone, but it doesn't give the parent. So you actually have to set ATT clone one, parent two, ATT one, parent. In order for it to show up in the workspace, I think that's weird. I don't remember it doing that. I think they updated that recently. Maybe I'm wrong. But we'll do it for the beam clones parent two. We can make that the beam dot parent. All right, so we'll get our attachment one clone. We're gonna get the world position, because remember, the position on an attachment is relative to the parent, different than part. And we're gonna get that POS. That's gonna be the mouse position, the thing we click on. We didn't pass that in yet. So if you don't know where POS came from, you're all right, we're gonna get into that. So we'll do a beam clone. And what do we gotta do with that? We gotta get our attachment one from the beam clone and set that to our ATT1 clone. Cool, now we're gonna get the debris service. We're gonna add item. We're gonna add our beam clone and we'll make it 0 0.06 seconds time to live, right? We're gonna make it a quick flash. We'll get the debris add item, whoops, add item, there we go. We need our ATT1 clone too, right? We gotta clean this stuff up when we're done with it. All right, so I need to call this make tracer 
problem is down here in the shoot, we are only getting the player and the target. Target, you can get the position, but it's going to be the position of the target, the center of the target. If it's a big target, you're going to get funny results. We need to go to M6 or shoot M16, the client script. Right? We're going to look for where we do our shoot. There it is. We're going to, it's a remote event, right? We're going to do a shoot RE. We're passing in the target. And then we're also going to pass in the mouse hit. We'll go back to our damage. And now we have the hit, right? We get the position from the hit. So down here, we can go ahead and do a make tracer, pass in hit.po or position, spell it out, position. That will be the POS in the make tracer. I also want to fire, even if I don't have a target though, right? So if I'm shooting in the air, I want to be able to see the tracer. Let's go right here and do an else, right? And then we, we, can make, we can make tracer here, but we need to get the direction, right? We need to send that ATT1 uh, attachment out. So I'm going to do a direction. I'll do hit.position. Right, and that's the that is the position of the C frame of the mouse. So even if you didn't select anything, you'll still get a position. Oh my gosh, we got a, a minus ATT zero. That's the barrel, right? The barrel attachment. We'll get that position. Let's go ahead and make this a unit vector, so it's of length one. That way we know how long it's going to be, and then we can go ahead and do our make tracer will pass in ATT1 world position. So this is the position of the barrel plus the direction times 200 studs. So we'll just shoot it out by 200. Now before we test this, if you want to use the carry animation, let's go over to the world right here to your workspace, avatar, rig builder, and the animation is for R15. So you have to use an R15 if you want to use my animation. Otherwise, you'd have to make your own. But I do have an animation in here. Anim saves. And we can go ahead and copy that. Control C. Go to the rig. And we'll just do a paste into. And then inside the rig, we have our anim saves. We'll open up the animation editor. Click the rig. And it should pop up. If not, you'll have to load the animation. There it is, M16 carry. Looks like he's carrying something, right? We can go ahead and toggle the loop animation if it's if you need it. It should be all right, but go ahead and do that just to be safe. And we could do publish to Roblox, M16 carry. That's looking good. And when you save this off under your account, you're going to get your own animation ID. You could use this in your games. Go ahead and hit that little those little boxes there. It'll say ID copied. Close that. We're going to go back to our M16. Under this animation, M16 carry, we'll do a control V. Paste that number that you got. Here, let me stretch this out a little bit. And now you should be able to use the carry animation on the M16. Let's go ahead and play the game. All right, so let's go ahead and pick up our automatic rifle. And I want to get close because I made the tracer very hard to see. I made it subtle. So I can kind of see it. I think I'm going to make it a little more visible though. Right? Because if I'm back here, I can't see it. It looks like it, it almost looks like it's broken. Let's go ahead and turn off our game. Make it a little easier to see. I'm going to go on the M16, under the gun part, beam. I'm going to get rid of that color sequence. I think I'm just going to make it white. If you just click the, the block, it should make it the first color in the sequence. If not, you can just bring it up, select the color. Light emission, I'm going to make that one, right? So it emits a little bit of light. And transparency, this is going to be the big one right here. Make that zero. You can change the thickness too if you want, right? I think I'm good with that. Let's try it. There's my rifle. 
Yeah, that's a little easier to see. I think I like that. I'm going to go with that. 